Can Sonnet 4.5 take our prompts and create complex AI agents and automations inside of NNN that actually work? This is the question that we are gonna be answering in today's video as we run 4.5 through a number of tests, seeing how well it can actually create these workflows given rather complex prompts. Finding an AI model that actually allows you to prompt your way into AI agents has been like the search for the holy grail for the low-code community for some time now, and Sonnet 4.5 might actually be the answer. So no more waiting around, let's just jump in and start testing. So let's set the stage for this video real quick. When I'm talking about Sonnet 4.5, what I'm not talking about is jumping into Cloud AI, going to Sonnet 4.5 on your model, and just giving it a prompt, right? We need more than that. The model isn't at that level yet. What you're seeing here today is going to be Sonnet 4.5 inside of Cloud Code being used in conjunction with the NADN MCP server, right? We have like this holy trinity of no code tools that are going to allow us to do what you see in this video, which is really powerful stuff. Now, right away, that's going to turn off a bunch of you because you're no code, you're in the NADN stuff. You don't know what a terminal is. You've never touched Cloud Code, right? Right away, I'm like, I'm kind of losing you. I know it's intimidating. I'm going to link two videos above right now. The first one is Cloud Code for non-coders, right? It's gonna set you up for success if you actually wanna get into this space because you should get into this space if you're serious about it. The second one is how to set up the NADN MCP server inside of Cloud Code. The NADN MCP server is vital for us to be able to do these things, right? This is what like supercharges Sonnet 4.5 in the NADN capacity, okay? And because of that, I'm linking you those two videos. Take a look at them. I'm not gonna spend 20 minutes in this video teaching the same stuff here. So I do the MCP server, all that, no. We're going straight into testing so we can see the outcomes and then make decisions based on that. So with that being said, in that last video where I took 4.1 Opus and Sonnet and added the MCP server, we did a few tests. We did an easy workflow, a medium workflow, and a more complex workflow. It killed it with the easy and medium workflows. 4.5 will do the same. We don't care about that. We're not testing about that. I want to see how it does on hard stuff. So for our first test, we're going to do the exact same test we did with 4.1, right? Which was a LinkedIn automation. Now let me read you the actual prompt and I'll superimpose it on the screen. I want you to create an NADN workflow using the NADN MCP server. Big picture, this automation is meant to help people land jobs by scraping LinkedIn jobs board via Appify, identifying hiring managers of the job, then crafting custom messages for those managers. The automation should begin with the user filling out a form, identifying the job they want. Based on that form, I then want you to scrape LinkedIn jobs, use web search to figure out the correct scrapers to use, bring the jobs back to the user, User chooses the jobs he likes. From there, find the hiring managers, create the custom email, and create a draft. Any questions? So that's actually a lot we're asking it to do, right? We're saying, hey, you the user, what sort of job do you want? We want the automation to find those jobs on LinkedIn, bring them back, give us a list. You see the list as a user, you say, okay, I like job one, two, and three, thumbs up. The automation then says, cool, I found those three jobs. Let me find hiring managers for all three and then craft custom emails for each and bring that back to you to look at. Right? There's a lot happening there that involves a lot of scrapers. We didn't tell it which scrapers to use. So it has to do web search, right? There's a lot going on under the hood for this automation, not just for getting it to work, but like finding out what it even needs to use, right? We gave it kind of minimal information. So that's what we did. That's what we gave the 4.1. So this is what 4.1 gave us. And if you remember in the last video, we had modules that didn't even exist. You see the one with the question mark and the Appify scrapers themselves were completely busted. So now what we're looking at is Sonnet 4.5's output for the exact same prompt. You'll notice right away we have no aired out modules, which is great. And on the whole, it's a bit more complicated, a bit more in depth. And just going through this super fast, what are the things that I know it will probably mess up is stuff like the Appify scrapers, right? Because Appify scrapers means it had to go on the web, it had to figure out A, which scrapers it's supposed to get, and then B, how to actually like modify the HTTP request module to do the correct JSON payload. And if I go down here to the body type, I'd see it actually started filling stuff out, which is great, right? It actually did its research. And if we look in here, yep, this is repeated. The other thing I would love to see is like an actual system message that makes sense. So if I click inside of here, and this is the one that's generating the email, what do I see here? All right, I see a system prompt, gives it an eight step process for how it should actually write the email. So I like this. Now zooming out real quick, does the general logic make sense, right? Job search form, scrape the jobs, upload the jobs to Google Sheets, and then sends you an email. You then select which jobs you like, gets all the info from the jobs, filters, finds hiring managers, gets all the managers, creates the emails, creates the draft. Okay, on the surface, this looks great. And this is probably gonna be like an 80% solution. Do I expect this to be a complete one shot when we're doing more complex automations? Like you saw the prompt we give it, that wasn't easy. 
But if you do that for like any complex prompt, and this is what gets spit out in comparison to what you saw before, that is a huge leap forward. So I think this is an awesome job. So that was the result of the first test. Now let's hop into Claude Code and talk really quickly about some of the best practices when you do this. So what we're doing now is I'm having it just kind of like one shot everything, but you don't need to do that, right? You can give it the prompt, put it in planning mode, ask it to ask you questions. So you're all on the same page before it actually codes it. What I've noticed too with 4.5 is, and that this was really obvious when you compared the 4.1 to 4.5 outputs was like the 4.5 goes much more in depth, more detailed, larger automations. That also means a larger JSON prompt. So while this MCP server does have the ability to actually go inside your N8N instance and create it for you, like the one we just saw, the workflow itself was actually too long. It was too much for the API parameters. So I just had to copy paste the code and paste it in there. It took five seconds, but just know that going in. And it also does a really good job when it comes to giving you deployment steps, right? It tells me to import the workflow. It also goes into detail about like, hey, Here's the credentials you need to put in there, right? You need to do it as authorization. This is what it should look like, which is really, really nice if you're ever confused about, okay, how am I supposed to actually authenticate these various HTTP requests? It goes into the actual flow, how to use it, and it even tells us the estimated cost, which I love as well. So here's what we're giving it for test number two. I want you to create a research agent with a multi-agent architecture that I can use for short, medium, and long-form type posting. This is for N8N, and I want you to use the N8N MCP server what questions do you got? Now, unlike test number one, this time we're going to do a little back and forth, right? And you can see right away, it gives us uh, basically seven different questions, sorry, 10 different questions that it has when it comes to like, how do you actually want to build this? This is a great practice to have when you work with Claude is like actually do some planning with it, right? And so this way you can really drill down to get the sort of output you want. But for our testing, I'm not going to hook it up. I'm not going to tell it what I want. I'm actually going to tell it, use your best judgment right? Let's see what it comes up with. Now, it looks like it might be going crazy and just sending it because I didn't actually have it in test mode. I had it in bypass mode. But let's take a look at what it's kind of thinking, uh, what it's thinking looks like because it shows it as it's happening. So we see the architecture right here, multi-agent architecture workflow, form trigger, research agent, analysis agent, content agents, three of them in parallel, Google Sheets, and then Gmail draft, right? That's not a bad idea. So it shows the agent roles. You have your research agent using SERP AI, 10 to 15 sources, an analysis agent, a short form writer for Twitter and LinkedIn, a medium form writer, more for newsletter blogs, and then a long form writer for full article support. Now this is great. And you could totally see how it kind of already breaks it in a short form, but how you could tailor this for different, you know, social media sites, right? So it looks like it might be waiting for me, but it actually looks like it's just going, um, just going to work. So we'll come back once it's done. So here's what it gave us, and this is looking pretty rough. So let's tidy this up. And all right, so it looks like it completely was busted on all the output parsers and the tools and as well as actually connecting GPT to it. So that's a shame. And all it really did is it went kind of nuts on just doing agent after agent after agent. In theory, this should be fine, right? Like you have the research agent with the tool at AdSERP API and analysis agent then sending it through. But to be honest, I expected a little more. It's kind of surprising that the LinkedIn one, which frankly was a much more complex prompt, we got a much more coherent output than this. So all in all, kind of disappointed in 4.5 on this one. Although to be honest, our prompt probably wasn't the best. Okay, so 4.5 definitely disappointed when it came to the research agent. Now let's take a look at how it does on creating a personal assistant slash rag agent. So the prompt I'm giving it is, Okay, I now want you to create an N8N RAG agent. I want it hooked up to Supabase. I want there to be a data ingestion pipeline so that the user can drop a document inside of a Google Drive and then have that doc routed, chunked, and inserted into the Supabase vector database. I also want the agent to have access to an assortment of executive assistant type tools, think email, calendar, et cetera. Let's see your plan. All right, so here's the plan it came up with. It's actually telling us it wants to do two workflows, which I like. So the first one's all gonna be about data ingestion. It's gonna include the Google Drive trigger, download, extraction. So everything I see here, this looks good. And workflow number two is the RAG agent, and it's saying it's gonna have the vector store tool attached to it. Great, that makes sense. As well as Gmail tool, Google Calendar, an HTTP request tool for custom integrations, like, mm, okay. Code tool, all right. Calculator tool, mm, all right. That's okay, it was pretty basic. Um, you also see here, it goes into like the text chunking strategy, what it's sort of thinking. It also goes into template inspiration because part of the N8N MCP server, one of the great things about it is it'll actually look at templates out there to see how other people have done things. So it actually references them here. 
and boom, 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 next step. So we're gonna have it go ahead and create it, and then I'll show you the output. So it's telling us it successfully deployed both workflows. It gives us some setup instructions of how we can actually, you know, configure the Superbase stuff for RAG. And then what's interesting here, if we scroll down, it actually points out like optional enhancements as well as known issues to fix. So it already knows like, hey, there's an issue with the load document data. And then it also says like, hey, the Gmail node has this issue, calendar node has this issue. And it says both tool nodes are placeholders. So it's kind of interesting that it essentially uploaded errors, but it knew, it knew enough to be like, oh, by the way, those are wrong. So I guess that's something of a positive. So let's see what it looks like. So first thing we got here is the data ingestion system. So watches for Google Drive, downloads, extracts, loads the document into Superbase. This right away I know looks good. Now, the great thing about NADN MCP, like I said, is it has examples to work off of. So if we're doing something that someone somewhere has done, like it does a good job. That's why I was so surprised the second test we did, it kind of sucked because research agents for that aren't terribly uncommon, but this is great, right? RAG agent up and running. Now here's a look at the RAG agent itself. So it has the chat interface. We see it has the memory. It has sort of just a generic HTTP request tool, a calculator. Now, like we said was interesting before is the Google Calendar and the Gmail is kind of messed up, but it actually announced that in Claude Code itself. So kind of odd, but like, at least I knew that going in, this was going to be messed up. We have GPT 4.0, and then we have the actual super base dog, uh, super base pool. Now issue here, we have embedding here, which is connected yet. It's not connected to the embedding section, which is also odd. But again, I think what you see here is sort of just like mirroring everything else, which is like a 50 to 80% solution. But what's a 70 or what's an 80% solution now with 4.5 was a 60% solution with 4.1. What you see here is like a 50% solution with 4.1, it would have been like a 40%. So really, if you want my like ultimate conclusions take on all this is like, we are slowly incrementing our way forward when it comes to this prompt to workflow stuff, which is great, right? Like we aren't that far away from this kind of one shotting these things every single time, especially as it gets more and more data to work off of when it comes to like the workflow repositories. But I will say, just like I did in the last video, like who actually benefits from this? Who actually benefits from like using Claude code in this manner? People who are actually good at anything, people who actually know what they're doing, right? This still isn't something for someone who's brand new and inexperienced to put in a prompt and create something. Caveat, you can do that for simpler workflows, but for more complex stuff, like you already need to know how to go from here to something that works. Right. And you only know how to do that if you've done it from zero to 100 before manually. So I think even more so than 4.1, 4.5 is a boon for those of us who are more experienced with NADN. You can save a ton of time. Right. From here, I can go to something that works very, very fast. Right. Very, very quickly. Um, someone who isn't experienced, they can't do that. So if you're someone who is more experienced and is looking for a way to sort of like boost your productivity, I think, you know, this Claude code, NADN MCP 4.5 triumvirate can actually do a lot of work for you. And so you should probably start messing around with this, right? Actually go a little bit more into the back and forth to see what you can create. Because if you do a great prompt and you actually nail down what you want, you can get something really solid. So as always, let me know what you thought about this in the comments. Also let me know like if you want to see more stuff with Claude Code and NNN, if you'd like to see more like best practices and less like one-shot testing and more like, okay, let's actually try to make this work and like really give it as much data as we can up front to give us workflows that truly are um, legit and production ready. Because I think that'd be an interesting path to go down rather than just kind of like, all right, how good are you at a one shot? So um, yeah, also check out the school as always, tons of resources there if you're trying to get um, more into the AI agency space. And I'll see you guys around.